And did you even know that making a face like this might be killing your gains under certain conditions? <music> Gregory von Lebestag here. We're all about kettlebells, so if you are into kettlebells, then like this video and consider subscribing. Now, in order to understand what happens if you make a grimace and whether this might be wasting your gains, we have to understand two things. Acyclic movement, which is represented right here, and cyclical movements, which is represented right here. The difference is fairly easy. Acyclic movements, are movements that you do for a couple of reps. And cyclical movements or cyclic locomotion are exercises that you do for a longer set of time. Now there's a couple of fundamental aspects that cover acyclic and cyclical movements. For example, we have motor potential, we have technical mastery, we have the power output, and then we have the result. Now what happens if I do a heavy deadlift with 240 kg kettlebells with my body. Let me demonstrate the lift first. My face changes to a certain extent. My body posture changes to a certain extent. So there's a clear cut difference on what happens when I do an acyclic movement for a couple of reps. And what happens with your face when you lift fairly heavy weights doesn't really matter. When you are engaging in acyclic movements, you are profiting from three systems. The central nervous systems, which sends flashes down your body. The neuromuscular system, right? the muscles, and then you have the energy systems. Your body tends to use all three systems, but it mostly gravitates towards the central nervous system and the neuromuscular system. And the energy systems, they're somehow, they are used, but not as extensively. Let's check out a cyclical movement or cyclic locomotion. What happens? In this case, your body is using these three systems as well. But the difference, as you might have guessed, is that your body is using the energy systems as a preferred source compared to the central nervous system or the neuromuscular system. And that's the reason why Russian sports scientists consider the facial expression of a sprinter who does a face like this? You know what they consider it? They think you haven't mastered the technique yet. If you are engaging in cyclic locomotion with a weight that can challenge you, but you are doing it cyclically, then you want to engage in the so-called, we call it the game phase. Because if you are engaging in the game phase, something special happens. Yuri Berkhoshansky says, some experienced coaches judge the mastery of a sprinter by their facial expression. If the teeth are clenched in the face, or we see a strained expression, the level of mastery is low. If the face is calm, their movements are free and unconstrained, and they possess the skills for running fast. Although curious, it is a rather accurate evaluation of mastery in cyclic movements, during which the muscles work in a rapid sequence of tension and relaxation. However, in acyclic movements, requiring the display of powerful force, no one is able to evaluate mastery in this manner. On a final note, another thing that happens is when you are engaging in the game phase mentality is first of all, you're focusing on one point. That's what I always do when I engage in kettlebell training. I focus on one point. That allows my sights to be fixed. My body or my head is not moving. I have one particular goal and one particular spot that I'm fixing my gaze on. So if I'm not starting to clench my teeth or 
make funny expressions and weird faces. I save energy in my face. And if I'm able to save energy in my face, I can use that energy to work and distribute it in my body. And the last thing that I wanna mention about the game face mentality is you are able to exert full control over your body and it's on display. And when you have listened to the podcast that I had with Valery Fedorenko, he says, if you're lifting with 232s in a competition, your ears are deafening because there's so much pressure building up, but you stay focused. So that tells me that you are disciplining your body because you realize that these signals are coming, but you act differently. And I think that's a great skill, not only in training, but it's also a great skill that you can use in daily life. When feedback is coming and you decide not to act on it, but to act differently. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it, consider subscribing, and let me know down in the comments what you wanna see next. The world of kettlebells is dominated by two training styles called heart style and kettlebell sport. Although vastly different in nature, they have been proven to work and give you the most bang for your buck whenever you pick up a kettlebell. If you understand them correctly and are able to differentiate between the two. If you are a beginner, this task might be understandably confusing. Enter the hybrid style and discover how to combine the best of both worlds. The hybrid style masterclass is a 10 week practice based online course that will help you take your kettlebell skills to an elite level, made in Switzerland. Learn what's been holding you back and how to become a versatile kettlebell master without having to piece together countless YouTube videos or rely on a gym membership. The price of the Hybrid Style Masterclass is 397 US dollars per month for three months. Save 20% with a one-time payment of 997 US dollars. We'll open registration only to a small number of new students every three months. Join the waiting list now to get access 24 hours before the general public. Link is in the description.